So, for ages, Camera Dan, hi Camera Dan, has been hassling us to talk about what he calls our his and hers Ducati Sport Classics. So, obviously, mine's better than Vicky's. No, uh, obviously, yours is not a Sport Classic, it's actually a GT. It's and a it's Sport not Classic GT. Whatever. Ish. <laughs> um, so, these are our bikes, and we'll talk over each other and both try and prove to you why. Our bike mine is, is better. Why mine is better than yours. Mine is better. Um, but they're both fantastic bikes. They're both, they're both basically Ducati Sport Classic Thousands variants of that um, game-changing model. And in fact, this bike arguably was the bike that created the bike shed, yeah, thanks, thanks to Vicky. Thanks to me. So, you know. So go on then. I did my bit. Okay, so I'll just talk you through a bit about the bike. Standard tank that comes with the bike. The only thing with this tank is it does um, expand. So um, it's got a little bit of warping, but not very much. And due to the ethanol in fuel, the tank moves a bit. So that was a bit of a kind of fail. So this yeah. bike has only <coughs> ever had um, high octane uh, mm. fuel put in it. That's what you think. But, it's a bit uh, warped. <laughs> the uh, Imola seat, uh, really handy because it's got its own storage panel, which I like. Um, but it's actually perfect for me because uh, riding this bike at speeds, this little kind of section just fits my butt nicely. Um, and uh, Dipla, Dopla? Diopa, make Diopa the seat. Diopa, make that seat. Uh, we've got Termi end cans. Um, I've got a lovely back end here with these beautiful um, brake and indicator lights that kind of look like bug eyes. Where do we get those from? Those came from a um, German company called Shinyo. Shinyo. We... The bike has been Vicky-fied. <coughs> it's been lowered by 20 millimetres front and back yeah. with oh. a lot of help from Hagen yeah, who the built these shocks. shocks especially for Vicky's weight and height and for getting the bike right. And then we dropped the... Uh, the yokes down the, the forks 20 uh, millimetres at the front mil. to make sure that, it, that the stance stayed level. And, and in fact, it hasn't really affected the handling at all. No. The bike still handles brilliantly. You just have a little bit less ground clearance <laughs> on corners. It has no turning circle, as most Ducatis, which I found out when we were riding around wheels and waves. Um, I actually took two bikes to wheels and waves and one just didn't work the whole time. And I went out for a ride with the guys and we were twisting round, coming round to um, the seafront and literally everyone did a really sharp right hand turn and I ended up nearly in the wall because the turning circle on these are non-existent. We've got aftermarket headlight. That's um, from LSL, and mine it's a Clubman. It's beautiful yellow, yours is a standard Mine thing. will be yellow, it's coming. Um, and, and it's a smaller light as well, so yeah, normally they're a seven smaller. inch Bosch unit and I think that's a six inch um, headlight. Cheap and lovely levers. Um, nothing really special off eBay. I think what I love about this bike and what people think, when I first saw this bike, I, I didn't think it would fit me or work for me because I'm a little short ass. But actually working with, speaking to the guys at Hagen who made the smaller shocks, making sure we got some advice about, you know, lowering both ends, it handles beautifully and it's actually perfect for me. We did a six hour ride to um, Belgium or something yeah. and um, literally it was my first ride. I used to have a uh, lower clip on, so proper down low stance and within an hour my wrist would swell up and be really uncomfortable. So um, we put slightly higher, more upright, um, Clip-ons. So these clip-on risers are from a Ducati ST4, so That's they're it. a little bit taller than the standard Sport Classic yeah. by Posto bars, which <coughs> are standard than the Mono Posto bars by about four inches. So yeah. these are probably about four and a half, five inches taller than normal. And at first I, I was really anti it because I love the cafe racer stance, but actually after doing my first ride, which was about a six hour ride, I got off my bike with the biggest smile on my face while these old gits were getting off going, oh, my back hurts and everything hurts. And I was just in a happy, happy, happy place. I love the riding position on this bike because I am small. The, the, the seat really holds me in place, but the, the lovely large tank, I, just, I can just relax and ride and really enjoy the ride. So um, obviously no fairing, so it's like chin down, um, and let loose. The sound is stunning, which we'll show you that later. The thing I really love about this bike is this bike was really the bike that founded the bike shed, this actual one as well. Eight years ago now, um, I was riding around on a, a Super Duke R and um, I was looking at getting an RC8R and I was riding um, like more and more of a bell end basically on really high powered bikes that were really noisy and much too fast. 
and uh, Vicky decided that I needed something um, that might calm me down a little bit. A bit of class. A bit of class. And I mean, basically, these bikes are 1,000cc um, dual spark Ducati engines, very similar to the, the engine you get in a, in a fairly modern Ducati Monster, Monster yeah. but in sort of a pretty frock, in a classic retro-looking styling kit. And it was a visionary bike built, uh, created by a guy who worked at Ducati for quite a while called Pierre Terblanche. Um, and he created this whole sort of generation of bikes ahead of its time. Yeah. In 2005, the bike was launched, and they only existed from 2006 to 2009. And really, they combined that aesthetic of modern running gear. You've got sort of Brembo brakes, and you've got sort of proper suspension, and the bikes handle, and they go around corners, and the engines are good for about 80 or 90 brake horsepower at the back wheel. But it had this retro look and feel. It's a proper Italian thoroughbred cafe racer but you can ride it to work every day. Yeah. So I had this bike, it was red, yeah. and, uh, and we started the customization process. And blogging about that on a blog called Full Tilt was the precursor to the blog that then became the bike shed, that became the show, and that became this place. And this is the actual bike. Um, I got myself the Paul Smart version of this bike a couple of years later, and then this bike became Vicky's, and we lowered it for her and made it work for her. Um, the bike went through being black, it was wrapped, then it was uh, silver, uh, yeah. painted, and now it's this uh, old English white, which is actually the a color, color code from uh, Davida Open Face Helmets, and we like that, and they gave us the color code. And um, it's been an ongoing custom project for the entire life of the bike shed, and it, it is always being changed. But this bike is actually sort of the heart and soul of the bike shed. And, and Just it was, a bit like me, really. Yeah, and it was thanks to Vicky buying it for me that <laughs> And became, then taking it back. And then <laughs> taking it back. <laughs> There's a present. That That's seems nice. to happen quite a lot. A year later, I'll have that. Thank you very much. But to be fair, the Paul Smart version of this, which was from the original iteration of the Ducati Sport Classic 1000, was the pure version. When the bike was first launched in 2006, journalists hated it. The clip-ons were four or five inches lower, and it was really difficult to ride. And because the tank is really long, it was the most uncomfortable Ducati ever built. Um, by the firm with the longest reach to the bars and journalists rode it and said this thing's unridable and also it had Olin suspension on it in the Paul Smart version it was rock hard and not really built for roads it was more built for track and it was hated the year after they bought out the Biposto twin shock version and they lifted the bars up a little bit and they also bought out the GT which had handlebars on it and that bike was much more rideable, but by then the damage had been done to the Sport Classic brand in the minds of motorcycle journalism and the riding public, and it never caught on. Now these bikes, I think they were seven grand new back in 2006, um, and now you'd be lucky to find a second-hand one with 20,000 miles on the clock for 10 grand. Yeah. And if they've been customised and looked after, they can be worth more. The Ducati Sport Classic uh, Paul Smart Limited Edition version that I have um, is worth about £20,000, which yeah. is more than double what it was when it was brand new. I also get offered 13 up to 15 quite often here at the bike shed for this bike because, you know, it's a beautiful looking machine, but there's not many of them left. So if Ducati relaunched it right now, actually, I reckon they'd sell really, really well because they are stunning. And the thing we didn't mention on this as well, it is a wet clutch. So um, it purrs, but you don't get the tick tick which I quite like. I like it. So the original um, Sport Classic, the Monoposto, the, which had the banana swing arm and a single shock, that had a dry clutch and it yeah. made that tambourine noise, yeah. which some Ducati purists like. The wet clutch is better. It yeah. delivers power to the back wheel. Yeah. To me, in my view, it delivers it more smoothly. The clutch is a lot lighter. This bike also has a, an alternative clutch slave on it that makes the, uh, the clutch even lighter, yeah. um, which is a good thing to do on any Ducati dual spark engine. Anyway, should we talk about your Let's old Let's talk banger. about my lovely GT. So, when this first bike came along, um, what I was really trying to do was create a practical daily ride that was also an exotic cafe racer. And, um, and in my mind, um, my Sport Classic 1000 was going to be that. 
I also briefly ruined my Pool Smart um, by trying to turn it into that particular bike. I took the fairing off it and I modified it and turned it into more of a roadster. That bike is now being put back, the fairings being restored and the clip-ons are going back I on. I won't say I told you so, but yes, she I did told tell you me so. so. <laughs> um, but ultimately, this was the bike I should have been building in the first place. So this is the third Sport Classic motorcycle in the Dutch and Vicky Bike Shed family of bikes. The GT version of the bike had a different shaped tank. It's about two inches shorter, so the reach to the bars was a little bit less, and it came with handlebars. Not like these, these are very flat Rizoma bars. The original handlebar riding position was more like this, and it was much more of a Ducati monster riding position. And other than that, the bike was identical to the Biposto. It had twin shocks, um, and it had the same basic setup, and it had the wet clutch. Um, the only thing that was different about it was it had a very different seat attached to the same subframe. And uh, the GT subframe, you, you'll notice on Vicky's, if, if Camera Dan does a clever cutaway later, there are two little dimples in the frame, um, which are actually there for rigidity. But on the GT, it doesn't have the dimples. So if you fit an aftermarket seat, like the Diopa Imola style seat, or this one, which is made by um, Star Ace or Giuseppe Starace in carbon, when you put these seats on, they sit on the frame and you see the dimples. So the GT doesn't have the dimples, it has the shorter seat, and it also it has a top yoke that will accommodate handlebars so it's a much more comfortable riding position but other than that it's the identical bike to the Ducati by Posto um, the other thing that was slightly different in the original Ducati GT 1000 was um, it had steel wheels the um, the wheels on the original mono Posto and by Posto Sport Classic 1000 were um, lightweight aluminium and they tried to save money on the GT and they made the wheels out of steel so the front end felt much more labour involved in turning the bike. So this bike now has tubeless Alpinas, um, which are fantastic and they're still spoked and they're lightweight. They don't actually weigh much less than the tubed wheels no. on the Sport Classic 1000. So they're a really good upgrade for the, for the GT, but they're not a particularly important upgrade if you've got a Monoposto or a Biposto Sport Classic. You've got the original. Um, so this bike, um, the other thing that I did, which um, I wouldn't have done, um, if it hadn't been for Vicky's experience, is I've also lowered this bike at the front and the back by 20 millimetres. So this bike now has exactly the same stance as Vicky's bike. And the reason I did that was because when we lowered Vicky's bike for her to ride it, obviously I then rode it around. And I realised that actually it was much nicer to ride and it felt more planted and it didn't seem to really affect the handling that the bike was lowered. So we did exactly the same thing. I went back to Hagen, ordered another set of shocks that were 20 millimetres shorter I, the one thing I did that was slightly different was I didn't drop the, uh, the front end quite as much. I only dropped the front end by about 8 or 10 millimetres. Um, because the GT, when you look at it aesthetically, it looks quite jacked up at the back. Uh, and I've actually found that this riding position is possibly even better than it is on that bike. For you. For me. Um, and it's, it's the perfect compromise. Um, so to just run through the modifications on this, it has got Rizoba handlebars and a, and a top end. Um, there are uh, some clock lowering brackets which are also fitted onto Vicky's bike. I kept the standard headlight, it's got Rizoma indicators um, and it's got a Brembo gold line uh, uh, upgrade on the front end for the brakes which meant that I needed 19 millimeter master cylinders also from Brembo so the front end braking really is one finger super sharp um, sort of high quality braking um, whereas the the standard bike has a um, it does have a, a twin pot setup, but it's not quite as powerful. There's not as much swept area within uh, the hydraulic system. It's also got the, uh, the larger clutch slave, so the clutch is super, super light, um, just the same as on Vicky's bike. Um, and the exhaust system on this is actually Conti downpipes mated to, I think, a couple of um, reverse cone end cans that came from Dime City Cycles, I think. Um, but this setup was put together for me by Callum from De Bolex, so thanks Callum. Unfortunately, um, shopkeep Gareth, who is a, a big lad at six foot three, rode this bike round the track at um, Lydon Hill the other day. And because he's a big, heavy lad, he's now ground the header pipes right down. And I was just feeling them earlier, and they're about kind of, they feel paper thin, so I think I might need a new header pipe on this side. Um, so the only downside of lowering these bikes is you do lose a little bit of ground clearance. The other work that's been done on this bike, and that there's a fair bit of smaller things you won't see, like brackets and various bits and pieces, and the back end and this kind of uh, sort of tail tidy, tail removal kit, all of this was done by Ray Petty Mechanica. 
um, who are also the guys behind Death Machines of London. So they, they sort of did a, a good job on the back end for me, just tidying up a few bits and moving a few bits, bits around. Um, because I didn't really want to do chopping and welding. That's the kind of thing that will just make me ruin a bike. Um, but this is sort of really, the end result is a sort of hybrid Sport Classic 1000, GT 1000 sort of roadster, I really, really, yeah. I, I'd describe it as because it's not quite a cafe racer because it's got handlebars, although the handlebar position is almost identical to yours. Although you have clip-ons, you've got risers, and yeah. the risers actually put the handlebars in exactly the same place. These are both fantastic bikes, and I think for me, they kind of underpin um, the roots of this scene, not just because Vicky gave me that one and then I took wrote it about back. it and then took it back, and it became the bike shed and became the story of the bike shed, but I think what this bike represents is that idea of um, the spirit of old school motorcycle yeah. design. With modern engineering. But with modern engineering. Absolutely. This is a proper high performance motorcycle. It goes around corners, the suspension, the brakes are fantastic, yeah. the engine's got power. Um, you, you know, you can ride, if you're a talented rider, you can ride this bike very quickly around tracks like Brands Hatch and Lydon Hill, and very few people will be passing you, except may, maybe when, when they're on the straights. Um, but they have that timeless spirit of the, the kind of the cafe racer, and uh, they're absolutely fantastic. The real issue is, if you want one, can you get one? Yeah, they're hard to find, and I'm not selling mine, so before you ask, it's not going anywhere. But, um, yeah. We should probably take you outside and let you hear these bikes because, <coughs> um, you know, when people say to us, why don't you fire that bike up, we really need to hear it. Sometimes it's not really that relevant, but actually the thing about the Ducati L-Twin dual spark air-cooled engine is this is a proper fuel-burning machine yeah. and it's really about the pure organic side of riding a motorcycle. Absolutely. You hear every gear, I run open belts on this bike because I love to see all the parts spinning and you hear the whole mechanical sound of the engine and the exhaust makes an incredible noise. Um, and both bikes sound fantastic, um, if not slightly different. Um, they both sound amazing. So we'll fire them up for you and you'll hear really what these bikes are all about. And I think the, the real point for these, these bikes come into their own when you're on a proper open road. That's when you really get to enjoy them. Riding around London, 20 mile an hour speed limits, they hate them. Um, you know, the clutch, doesn't really like it, it doesn't want to sit kind of idling at 20 miles an hour. So when you get them out on the road, they're comfortable, they're fast, they're quick, they sound great, they're responsive. You can really feel the road when you're on it. The riding position, I feel really planted, really connected, and actually quite fearless on it. And I can go proper speed, so it's, uh, yeah. I'm they're confidence-inspiring bikes. <laughs> Absolutely. They go where you look, and which is the is best kind yours. of motorcycle. So mine's much better than yours. Mine is a development right. of your bike. This is the original. No, mine was the one where it grew, and that was the old yeah, school, and this is the new. this is the original. New. And this then is like I a decided copy. to refine it it's further and make it's it better. You don't know what you're talking copy. about. It's rubbish. This was the first one. This started the bike shed. It's mine. So it's time to give these bikes a sound test. I'm sure you all agree. My bike sounds better, looks better, is better is the original. Which is ridiculous um, because clearly my bike is an evolution of this bike but it's much better and it sounds better too. Okay, well let's give it a go. Start your engine, sir. Mine is the better bike. I thought only yours was running. There you go. 
Mine's much louder. It's not louder. It is. Harry, whose bike was louder? This one, yours yes. definitely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> come now. I need to go and have some tea. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing.